audience, Joel Puma from Sneaker Shopping. Obviously, I'm coming to you from my house. We are out of the office. I hope everyone's staying home and I hope everyone's staying safe. Well, I wanted to check in with you guys and answer some fan submitted questions about season 10. We just wrapped up with our season finale. Thank you guys so much for submitting questions. So let's get to them. Alan asks, Joe, out of all the cities you've traveled for sneaker shopping, which city is your favorite besides New York City? Good question. We're always on the road. I love LA. We're there all the time. We kind of, me and the crew, my directors, my producers have kind of our own routine out there because we're there so much. But I really love shooting in Atlanta. It's another city that we have to go to multiple times a year. We love Gus's fried chicken. Atlanta has always treated us right. And besides LA and New York, Atlanta I think is a close second to our favorite city. Anonymous asked, we always get a 10 minute or so episode. How long are you and the guests actually in the store filming, picking out sneakers? You know, that varies. Sometimes guests of the show come in and they know exactly what they want to get. They come in with a plan, shoes that they may not have been able to pick up since they've been on the road. And as we're doing the interview, they see things and they're like, oh, I definitely want to get those. Others browse for, sometimes we've had people browse for like an hour and a half, really making conscious decisions of what they're going to buy. For season 10, honestly, I think the person who stayed the longest to pick out shoes, rest in peace, Pop Smoke. So thankful we got a chance to shoot an episode with him. Such a great young talent. He was in the store for like two hours after the interview. He definitely was someone who took his time browsing the shelves. Once again, rest in peace, Pop Smoke. Gone too soon. Chris Estrada asks, have you ever been starstruck? That's a question I get all the time. I wouldn't consider it starstruck. I think starstruck to me kind of means very nervous, sweating, and I wouldn't consider ever being starstruck, but I think there is some sort of adrenaline and some sort of anxiousness before a shoot. It's not like going into the office and sitting through even a big meeting. When you're dealing with A-list celebrities, and this season we were fortunate to have Will Smith and Martin, Jimmy Fallon, Rick Ross, Tyra Banks, Lil Wayne. Those are really big gets that you kind of have to be prepared for and ready to establish rapport with them. And there's always a little bit of anxiousness and kind of adrenaline flowing. A bunch of people submitted this question. Looking back on season 10, what was your favorite episode? Again, this season I think was one of our strongest. For my favorite episode, I would have to say Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon came ready to shoot. He had ideas flowing. You guys see the last shot when he's getting trapped in the trophy case at Flight Club. That was all his idea. He had this, the scarf that he wore that he made a joke at the top of the episode. So it was an uh, early morning shoot. Jimmy Fallon, though, always professional, came to play. That was one of my favorites. And I think the finale, Lil Wayne, was a really, really solid episode. The fact that Wayne has not been in a mall in 15 years is something that none of us could probably identify with. So between takes, he was kind of taking it all in and it was really, really cool to see. The other one, obviously Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, just a really grail get for the show. They both have so much sneaker history to open the season 10 with a episode of that stature with those two heavyweights was just an amazing way to kick off the season. Cameron Peters asked, do you still have your pair of shoes you got from Macklemore? Cameron, I do have those shoes. They're actually right here. Whenever these pop up on Stadium Goods or Riff or Flight Club, people always at me and say, oh, did you sell these? Did you sell your Macklemore's? Let it be known, I will never ever sell the Macklemore Sixes. This was a gift I was still surprised that he gave me. Always appreciative of this and these will never be sold and I will always have these. Someone asked, how do you learn so much about the guest who's about to be on the show? First of all, thank you. Second of all, we always try to find questions that some relate to sneaker culture and some relate to the sneaker history of the celebrity. Your older brothers came home with Iversons. You were like six or seven. That's crazy. Do you remember that day? I 1000% remember that. And then we try to expand and tangentially have questions that relate. Oh, wow. Why well, you guys did your research? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we listen to a lot of podcasts, we read a lot of old blog posts, and we read a lot of magazine articles, or we look on Getty and look at historic, like, iconic fits. So it's a mixture of a lot of things. Angela Viva asked, what are the three sneakers that everyone should have in their closet? I think everyone should have a Black Cement Jordan 3 in their closet. I think everyone should have a Stan Smith in their closet. 
And for the third one, I think everyone should own a pair of Nike Cortez Classics. They look good brand new. They look good a little beat up. Those are three shoes that I think everyone should have in their closet. Anthony Bonacchi, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Seems like a nice Italian guy. How come you never wear white sneakers? I've addressed this on the podcast, the Complex Sneakers podcast. White sneakers, to me, I have a big foot. They feel a little Guido-ish to me. I've never really been comfortable wearing all white sneakers. Whenever I put them on or I've tried to put them on in the past, it just feels like two white bricks on my feet. So I stay away from white sneakers. Everyone who knows me knows that I never wear white sneakers. There's been some awesome collaborations that my friends have done even that are like white Air Force Ones predominantly and I don't even wear them, but they're definitely in the collection somewhere safe. So white sneakers, something I've never really been into. That's why you don't see me wearing them on the episodes that much. Carter Graham, what shoes did you wear on your first day at Complex? My first day at Complex was a long time ago. I'm not really sure what I wore on my first day of Complex when I actually got the internship. I do know what I wore to the internship interview though. There was this brand called Creative Recreation. I think they're still making sneakers and I remember I wore the Creative Recreation Cicero Low. It had a navy blue strap on the toe box and it was royalish blue on the upper and I remember it was kind of like at the time the casual sneaker that didn't look that athletic but also didn't look like a hard bottom so it was somewhere in between but the creative recreation Cicero Low is what I wore on my complex interview back in the day I guess it, it all worked out in the end. Alfredo Mandahano asks, what was your first memorable pair of sneakers and is there a pair that you regret losing or throwing away? First memorable pair of sneakers. I had a bunch. I know I had the Jordan 6 white and infrared. I had the old Jason Kids. I had the old Penny Hardaways. I told this story on the podcast that in 1997, the first day of ninth grade, I had the Air Max 97. So my parents were cool about getting me one really good pair of sneakers a year for school. So I had some pretty good ones growing up. One though that mistakenly was thrown away, the Jordan 9. Flint colorway. It's a shoe that released over a decade ago. I don't think she threw them out actually. I think she gave them away. So let me correct that. She gave them away without me knowing they were in my basement. And fortunately, last season we shot Dane Lillard in Portland. The store index had a pair of Jordan 9 Flint gray colorway in my size and they actually hooked me up with them. I was so happy to get those shoes back. So they did me a solid on those, but definitely my mom gave those away or they disappeared from the house I grew up in. Joseph Lee asks, is there a special shoe close to Joe's heart that gave him the passion to get heavily into sneakers? There's not one shoe that got me into sneakers, but I will say a few weeks ago, I acquired these unlucky Dunk SBs from one of my mentors storage closets that passed away. He was my manager at Finish Line. He's a guy who taught me a lot, who gave me a pretty good work ethic. And his younger son, who's now a sneakerhead, actually texted me and said, I have all these sneakers in my dad's storage closet. And he sent me the unluckies and I, I gave him some money and got these. So definitely a special pair. I'm wearing them sparingly, but really happy to get these. It's a uh, from an old mentor, Brian Schneider, who definitely shaped my kind of passion for sneakers. Dalen Oliver asks, which sneaker you want but don't have? Which person do you want to come to sneaker shopping? One sneaker I still don't have, still need Fragment Jordan 1s. I said it on the Little Yachty episode. I need those still, I haven't pulled the trigger on them. I'm hoping maybe season 11, once we come back, we'll see if I have the Fragment 1s, but still need those. Which person do you want to come to sneaker shopping? There's a bunch of them. LeBron James, Jerry Seinfeld, Travis Scott, of course. We've been through so many people on the show, over 180 something episodes, I think at this point, but there's still a big, big group of people that we haven't had on that we'd love to have on. And hopefully season 11, we knock some of those bucket list guests off. Matt really asks, do you always keep your sneaker closet organized consistently? No, the answer is no. Anyone who has visited the complex office knows there's a big pile of sneakers there. There's a bunch, probably hundreds of pairs at my parents' house. There's a bunch of pairs here. Unfortunately, the closet is not that organized, but one day when I show you guys my collection, it will be in pristine shape. By then, 
whenever that is, it'll definitely be organized. So thank you guys for joining me. I want everyone to stay safe. We do have some more sneaker content planned. Maybe you'll see my current rotation. We're thinking things through. Everyone stay inside. This too shall pass. And I thank you guys for the support on season 10. We'll be back before you know it.